Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Just over a year or so ago, I published an unboxing and first use video about my Monport 40 watt CO2 laser. Although the specific model I received wasn't in the greatest of condition, it had a lot of potential. The most significant downside, however, was the control board. It required the use of some proprietary software of highly questionable quality and a USB dongle to make it all work. It was a major step backward from a simplicity perspective from something like Lightburn, which I was used to. Shortly after I completed my review, Monport came out with a replacement motherboard that allows you to use Lightburn, which is a major step forward for a budget-friendly laser cutter like the Monport. I did a little digging on the internet about the new motherboard I didn't find a lot of information except for one relatively useful video. It seems though the motherboard does allow the use of light burn, it was not terribly easy to install, and the results could be a little questionable at times. At the time, the board was selling for $99, which is a fairly hefty price for a laser that only costs about $350 total. Secondarily, with the less than stellar reviews, I was on the fence about buying one. Well, Christmas time rolled around and Monport had a sale where the new motherboard was 50% off. That was in my budget, so I ordered one. It took some time to arrive, so I missed my holiday vacation window. So the board sat there on the shelf for a couple months. Around this time, Monport released a new version of the motherboard, what they called 2.0. I can't really say that I would call it a 2.0, since the new version of the motherboard was a complete rework from what I would call the version 1.0 upgrade. The new version was a drop-in replacement for the original board. The same size, same connectors, the same overall fit and finish. Once again, the new board was $99. At this point, I was a little annoyed and a little chafed that I had spent $50 for something that was clearly an inferior board, and I was facing yet another $100 for the next revision. Eventually, Monport had another sale, and I decided to order the 2.0 board for $79. That's more than the $50 I spent for the other version, but it's still less than the $100, so I felt that I could live with that. Once again, a few months rolled by before I found the time to make the upgrade. My original plan was to film the installation, do some test cuts, and show the results. Well, it turns out the filming process of getting the motherboard installed didn't quite go as I planned. I had some focus issues with the camera, I had some lighting issues, and in the end, the installation process only took about 15 minutes, which is a good thing. So rather than wasting 15 minutes of your time seeing the back of my head out of focus, I decided to do a voiceover of the process, throw in some pointers, and then show the results. I will pull up a picture of the inside of the laser, show the motherboard, and quickly walk through the installation process. Then I'll talk about the light burn setup and do some tests. Okay, let's start by discussing what you'll need to do the installation. To do the complete installation, you will need a number two Phillips screwdriver, Yes, they do come in different sizes. Next, you will need a 10 millimeter wrench and socket or two 10 millimeter wrenches. Next, you will need a seven millimeter wrench or socket. If you choose the socket, make sure that it is relatively deep as it needs to fit over the bolts protruding through the motherboard. And finally, obviously you will need the new motherboard, which you can get from Monport. Coincidentally, it is currently on sale for $79 in July of 2023, so now might be a good time to pick up one if you're interested. Before we start the removal and installation, let's get familiarized with the motherboard. Here is a picture of the new motherboard next to the original board. As you can see, they are identical in shape and nearly identical in layout. This makes the install super easy since you just need to unplug the connectors from the original board and plug them into the new board. It really is that simple. Before you start the installation, please make sure your laser is disconnected from power and is not connected to the USB from the computer. This ensures that there is no power in an enclosure that might result in an otherwise shocking experience. Starting the install, next we have a picture of the inside of the laser. As you can see, the motherboard is mounted on the inside of the front of the laser on the enclosure. It is connected by four screws mounted to a removable panel. Start the replacement by removing the three bolts that hold in that front panel using that 10 millimeter wrench. If you have access to the underside of the machine, it is probably easiest to use the socket on the bottom and the wrench on the inside. 
With the bolts removed, carefully remove the panel, exposing the motherboard and the standoffs. Using the Phillips screwdriver and that 7mm wrench, loosen the screws and remove the nuts. Separate the motherboard from the panel and set this panel aside. Take the new motherboard, attach the screws and attach the bolts, tightening them down firmly but not too tightly. Next, transfer each one of the plugs from the original motherboard to the new motherboard. The order is not important as long as the plugs are in the same location on the new motherboard. With all the plugs in place, you can reattach the new motherboard to the front panel. Now this can be a little bit tricky, so attaching it one screw at a time probably makes sense. Honestly, getting these bolts into place and tight was probably the hardest part of the install for me. The final step of the install is the most critical, and that is attaching the laser control cable. This is the magic that allows Lightburn to control the intensity of the laser. With the new motherboard, you should have been provided an additional cable labeled CBI. It's a short cable with two three-pin connectors. On the power supplier, you will see two separate connectors next to the power connector. Remove the three-pin connector and the one-pin connector. This disconnects the power module on the front panel. Next, on the short cable we just mentioned, there is a label that says CBI, and it is closer to one end of the cable than the other. Connect the end with the label to the motherboard, and then the other end to the power supply three pin connector. This orientation is critical as your laser will not fire if the cable is connected backwards. Now you're done with the installation. That is literally all that it takes. With the new motherboard installed, you can reconnect the power to the machine and prepare to connect Lightburn. I'm going to assume you already have Lightburn installed, but if not, download it and follow the instructions on the screen. Plug the provided USB-C connector into the motherboard and then connect the USB-A to your computer. You should see the red power light illuminate on the motherboard. Next, turn your laser on and ensure any necessary cooling is operating, like the water pump. With the power on, it's time to discover your laser using Lightburn. Click on the Devices button on the lower side of the Lightburn user interface. Then click Find My Laser and click Next. Lightburn should think for a while and then present you with a screen showing the laser gerbil controller and the size of your machine. Now, this part is very important. Click Next and set the home position to the back left corner of the machine. Once you do that, click Next, Next, and Done. And at this point, your machine should automatically home and you're good to go. If anything happens to go wrong at this time, this is where you need to consult the manual or do a little bit of digging on the internet. From this point forward, you can now use Lightburn and start making things with your newly updated laser. Now that we have everything updated and running, let's talk about some issues that I did have along the way, however. Aside from the written instructions provided with the motherboard being suboptimal, the instructions made no mention of that short laser controller cable or what to do with it. Thanks to some internet sleuthing, I was able to figure it out. So that's why I went into a little bit of detail in this video saying what to do with that cable. Secondly, I originally tried to change the motherboard out without removing that inner plate, and that was an epic fail. So I highly recommend taking the entire plate out and replacing the motherboard outside of the machine. Third, when I first connected the motherboard to the computer, it was not recognized at all not even in the device explorer of my Macintosh. I switched the USB ports and everything started working. I still don't know why for sure the first port didn't work, but ultimately I was able to resolve it. Finally, I didn't pay very close attention to that light burn discovery set of screens, and I just clicked next, 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 not noticing that the home position was sent to the front of the machine rather than the back of the machine. Well, let's just say that made for an interesting initial setup where the gantry crashed into the front of the machine and kept grinding the gears until I hit the emergency stop. So once again, pay attention to those discovery screens and set up your home position properly. Aside from those few hiccups, everything went smoothly and the setup was actually very easy. Here is one of the test files that I produced and I did a couple speed tests on it and a couple power tests. And I also did an engraving of the 
Flying Ninja Woodworks logo. Now this uh, dithered engraving is something that you couldn't do with the original machine. You could only cut at a specific power level. And so this kind of grayscale engraving I think is really cool and it turned out really, really well with Lightburn and with a new controller. Overall, I am very pleased with the results that I got. Now, I still have a bit of a focusing issue with the machine, but that has nothing to do with the controller. I do plan on upgrading the lens and the mirrors and even adding air assist at some point in the future. Once I do all that, I can figure out how to dial my machine in perfectly and get everything situated. Overall, I have to say this is the best upgrade I have made to my machine so far, hands down. And I highly recommend you get the motherboard, especially now that it's on sale again. If you are interested in watching my original unboxing video, well, you can check that out right here. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.